It is Sunday, February 21st. 30 odd degrees outside, damn near 70 in the greenhouse. Heater's not going to be coming on today, but the exhaust fans will. So, many years ago, I picked up a copy of Peter Adams' Bonsai Design Japanese Maple book, and it was an inspiration. And for years since, I have been working on using his fast trunk development method number two. And this is one of the guys that was inspired from it. I did this tree about 20 odd years ago. In 2004, I was invited to lecture for a garden club upstate New York in the middle of the winter. Like an idiot, I brought this tree with me and the entire top half of it uh, couldn't handle the cold on that January day. So it took me, I don't know, 2004, 15 years to rebuild the top. And it's still not exactly where I want, but it's, it's getting there. But I'm constantly making cuttings off the parent plant that this came from, plus I get cuttings from this. And um, I've rooted a couple of them, and I'm going to attempt to show the bare bones Peter Adams fast trunk method number two for the initial potting. So I have two elms here that I started a couple years ago. And what I'm going to do is work on the planting angle and the initial cut. So first thing I want to do is remove the tree from its nursery pot. And then I need to see what's going on with the roots. Uh, a little touch of root mealybug there and there and there. So I'll have to call in my spray guy. Good thing is Chinese elms don't seem to have any flowers that attract any of the pollinators. So I'm not worried about using insecticide on Chinese elm. Now what is this? Oh, part of the root. Look at that. All right. So when I'm doing a tree using this method, I want to find the interesting surface roots first because they're going to help me determine whether the tree... Oh, here we go. Here's something I've been meaning to show you guys. The worst weed ever. This thing came up from Florida about 30 odd years ago. Have not been able to get rid of it. It has infested people's lawns. It's constant, constant battle with it in the greenhouse. I won't even put it near a compost pile. So that's gonna go straight in the garbage for the town to pick up. So what I wanna do is see what the roots are up to. And I've got some funky roots, so I don't need that thing making that U-turn and shooting up into the sky. So I can eliminate that. I'll probably, knowing me, I'll put that in a pot and see if I can get it to grow a new tree. So, for those of you who are freaking out that I've cut this amount of root off the tree, don't. You can get away with this on certain plants at certain times of the year, and I'm going to be removing 90% of the tree's foliage, so I'm not panicking about the amount of roots I've taken off. I'm more concerned about root placement and what I have left and whether or not it's going to make any sense for a design. So my reflex left over from the days with my instructor is to go uh, slanting from bottom left to top right. So if I do that and I use this side as the front, I've got one giant root over there, three little ones down here. If 
if I do it this direction, I've got that one giant root and the three little ones. Right now I'm going to keep that big giant root, although I am very, very, very tempted to eliminate it. And then you have to decide where you're going to finish the tree. How tall do you want it to be? Because generally speaking, I want to make my first cut about two-thirds up the finished height of the trunk. Maybe one-third, depending on where the branches pop. So if I want to make this my number one branch and I want to continue the trunk line with that, I'll make a cut here. And that'll end up making a cute little tree, not too much bigger than the one I have now, if, if bigger at all. Or I could make a cut up here, knowing that the tree will finish up there. So regardless of what I finish, choose as the finished height, I need to find something that's going to make a good number one branch. That would make a nice number one branch. That would make, all of these would make nice number one branches, unless I don't break them off. So I think I'm going to go for a shorter tree. Now this will reduce the demand for moisture from the roots because now the tree no longer has to supply moisture to that trunk. And now what I'll do is I'll put one wire on this because I want to twist this counterclockwise. So I'll put one wire on it counterclockwise. Then we're going to go into uh, either a six inch, a seven inch, or an eight inch pot. Don't know if it'll be a bowl pan or if it'll be one of my old mum pots. All right, so I need to secure the wire at the base of the trunk. Follow up. Now, knowing that I want to make that as my number one branch, I will keep the wire under it. All right, so that's going to be a number one branch, and then either this or this will be the continuation. of the trunk line. Now when you don't have enough finger strength or you're afraid you're going to damage the tree, take out your ginning plier and now you can twist the tree. So I want the line from here to here and then I want it to start doubling back on itself. I don't know if you can see in there where I scrape some of the bark. Kind of typical. Not getting panicked over it. I am going to try and twist this just a bit more. Alright, so that goes down and to the right and then this will come up now if I'm really satisfied with that one I could even make a cut to transition to the next uh, segment of the tree and what I want to do is make sure that the distance from the surface of the soil to this first branch is larger than the distance from the second from the first branch to my next branch. Now, elms are kind of one-sided, kind of flat in their growth habit. So I'm going to need to twist this and position a bud towards the back and then a bud for the next level of branches. So I'm thinking that is where I want to go for the next branch and then bring this back on itself. So this is kind of cheating based on the literature from Mr. Adams. He usually just makes a cut, waits for a bud to come out. I'm impatient and I think that I may end up 
with this doing what I want. And save a season, maybe. Not really sure how much time it's going to save. All right, so now I want to twist that bud so it goes to the back of the tree without snapping it off. I managed to do that, but something else fell off. I don't know where. And then I want to bring this back on itself. So I have a zigzag up to the right, zag to the left, zig to the right, number one branch. I got a bud back there for back branch. Got a bud here for a number two branch. And now we decide what size container to go into. So I'm not exactly worried about root spread right away. I'm more worried about developing some good growth. So I think I'm gonna go with this pot, which says not a whole hell of a lot about its size. I'm gonna guess it's somewhere in the five inch range. I could also go with a bulb pan. This is a six inch bulb pan. I could do that as well but I prefer to save my bulb pans for plants that are further along in their development and ready for me to start reducing the height of the root ball. So we'll use the mound planting technique. So you see me scrunching up stuff. Those are leftover bits of either peat moss or compost that didn't get fully broken up when I mixed the soil. Finally got a cement mixer. So this coming month, I'm going to be able to mix up soil in bulk, which will make me so much more relaxed and it won't matter if my 20-somethings are not around because I can handle the cement mixer by myself, but when I have young muscle floating around, I prefer to let them do the, the muscly work. I know. I'm evil. But that's the way it has to be when you get to be my age. Those days of climbing through trees and jumping off fences are, are no more. The knees don't agree. All right, so I have my initial angle set. I've got my continuation of the trunk line there and there. I've got a back branch. I've got a potential uh, number two branch there. I have a backup in case this goes south. And the only thing I would do at this point is maybe, and I'm not even sure I want to, but I'm going to anyway, is give it a light application of a slow-release fertilizer like Osmocote. And then I'm going to put it in a nice spot in the greenhouse where it won't be too hot, it won't be too cold, and I can keep an eye on it and if all goes well, I'll show you some pictures in a couple weeks and you can see how it's developing. So this is the spot where I'm supposed to tell you like, subscribe, etc., comment, questions, blah, blah, blah. You do your thing and uh, in the meantime, go play with your trees.